Hi everyone, Kate back after my brief break in January. I just wanted to take a step back um, from watching YouTube so much and from looking at Instagram so much and uh, just to kind of help my attention span. And if anything, it has made me re-fall in love with reading. I have had so much fun with my reading this month and it's just really spurred me on to make 2019 my best year of reading ever. Uh, but what was also a nice realization in my break was that I really love making booktube videos and I just over the you know vlogmas videos that I did it was just so nice to see so many lovely comments coming in and I really appreciate and enjoy all of them so thank you for you know being active subscribers it really means a lot to me and I am looking forward to a great year of videos I do kind of have a goal in mind and that is to put up one video a week we will see if I'm successful. Um, so that will be, you know, I missed a couple weeks in January. So let's just say 50 videos in 2019 is the goal. Um, and we'll see if I'm successful. Uh, yes. So the video I'm here for today, though, is the first in the Betsy Casey 2019 read along videos. In case you didn't see my announcement video, myself and Kelly from Books I'm Not Reading and Katie from Life Between Words are hosting a year-long read-along of the Betsy Tacey series by Maud Hart Lovelace. Uh, the series follows Betsy as she grows up in the town of Deep Valley, Minnesota, and uh, she's growing up in the Edwardian era. And uh, these are basically semi-fictionalized by uh, autobiographies uh, from Maud Hart Lovelace. And in the course of the story, you get to know very well Betsy's best friend, Tacey, and then their good friend, Tib, and Betsy's family and her friends that she gets to know at school and um, just different townspeople. So it's just a really wonderful, wonderful series. Uh, it starts out at a lower reading level where the writing is very simple in the first four books, which are all elementary age. Uh, and so then in March, we will move along to the high school books. But for the first uh, two that we read this month, they were Betsy Tacey and Betsy Tacey and Tib. In Betsy Tacey, you get to see Betsy and Tacey meet for the first time. And all of the wonderful um, imaginative adventures that they go on. Um, they imagine uh, things like they're flying and um, they do really... Uh, Iconic things that children like to do. They have um, a sand store, um, and I remember having a lemonade stand as a kid. And uh, it's also really neat to see how, um, when a really sad thing happens in Betsy Tacey, which I won't give any spoilers for that, but how um, the neighbors are really supporting one another in this time. And I think sometimes in the modern era, when we're just inside constantly consuming the internet, we don't really get to know our neighbors as well. And that's something that's a real strength. I think uh, before people were just so um, consumed by media, you knew your neighbors uh, more well. And uh, you see that in the, when the really tragic thing happens, how, like I said, how they're really supporting uh, one another. But it's also neat to see this really tragic thing that happens from the eyes of a child. You're not really getting many details of the adult experience of this. You're just seeing what the children saw at the time. Um, so then uh, another thing that I really enjoyed seeing uh, was there is a, a flying lady that comes to town with a circus and uh, they are just so excited. They're so fascinated. They're just in awe of this. Um, and I remember the circus came to town when I was a little girl and um, it was very exciting and uh, it was just something that you know you look forward to for such a long time and then it's finally there and you get to see it and it's just so much to take in. Um, so then in Betsy, Tacey and Tib, that is when Tib moves to town from Milwaukee and she lives in what they call a chocolate colored house and it's interesting to see, it's talked about several times, how Tib's personality is distinctly different from Betsy and Tacey but they still really like her and they're very fond of her. And um, one of the things in here that really stuck out to me was um, the house uh, or in T 
Tib's house, there's a bunch of spare wood in the basement. And so Betsy, Tacey, and Tib build a little miniature house um, in the basement. And then they're playing house. And it's super fun. And it made me think of when I was little and my family got an addition on added onto our house. My favorite stage of the addition was when the wall hadn't been taken out yet and there was just the foundation uh, for the addition. And we played in it so much. And it was over the course of a summer. So it was just really fun to have our own little pretend house, you know, made out of cinder block. Um, but it's just, there's nothing like the imagination of a child. Um, you know, I'll try with Peter sometimes to, um, to play different imaginary games and it's just so tiring. It's so much work for me to try to get back to that, that childlike state. Uh, and then another thing that seemed, uh, like so typical of, uh, you know, an experience as a child is that all three of the girls end up cutting each other's hair because they want to have locks of hair to remember each other by. So <laughs> it, it ends up going very badly, as you can imagine. And there was a time in elementary school I remembered I was rushing out the door one day to get to school and I had a huge knot uh, in the back of my head, uh, in my hair. And I um, was really annoyed with it and how long it would take to brush it out. So I just took scissors and just like chopped it off. Um, and of course, my mom noticed later on. I was not very happy, but I just think that's such a thing that so many kids do is cut their own hair. Um, so yeah, I just think it's really neat. There are a lot of days, you know, as a child that probably don't stand out, but I think Maude Hart Lovelace remembered enough that it made these two lovely books. Um, so I think it's also neat to see kind of the gradual freedom that the girls are allowed to have the older that they get. Um, so, you know, the, the fourth one is called Betsy and Tacey Go Downtown. So I do think it's nice how it kind of moves along as they get older and there's enough variety in it. The books don't, don't feel like they're all like one another. Um, cause there's that you can tell they're, they're getting older, um, in each one. So I really enjoyed these first two. They were such quick reads, um, and uh, yeah, so the only thing that I don't love about these, to be honest, are the illustrations. So um, let me get one here. So they're they're charming. Like, don't get me wrong, they're they're cute. Um, these are by Lois Lensky, who, if you don't know, did the Mister Small books. Um, so Engineer Small, um, Cowboy Small, Papa Small. They're really cute little, um, we have several in board book form. I love reading them to Peter and I think they're very cute and winsome for board books. But for these books, um, I don't know why. They just don't pull me in as much. They look very boxy, I guess. So I was reading then that Lois Lenski was offered to do the high school books, but she turned it down. But I'm kind of glad because I much prefer those illustrations. So I'll show you these, those in, um, in March once we're in the high school years. So that's the only thing that, you know, I'm not wild about. Like I said, they're kind of endearing, but when I really think about it, I don't think they're the most awesome illustrations. But uh, let me know if you did end up reading uh, Betsy Tacey and Betsy Tacey and Tib and what your thoughts were. I'm really looking forward to discussing with all of you and I will be back for another booktube video very soon. Bye.